Welcome to the April edition of Superintendent's Corner. I'm Dan Raver for Boardman School's Television Network. I'm joined today by Boardman School's Superintendent, Mr. Tim Saxon. Welcome, Mr. Saxon. As always, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. So, we're almost at the end of the school year, and uh, I know we've had some changes throughout the year, especially with uh, the Treasury and our Treasurer. Yeah, um, like you said, it, uh, the school year has gone pretty fast. Uh, I think we were just talking earlier, I couldn't remember if it was April or May, <laughs> but I have found it, it is April, uh, but May will go fast. Uh, I always tease my kids because they always say, you know, summer goes so fast, but we forget the school year goes so fast. So a lot of good events coming up. Uh, any, any parents and uh, community members watching, get on our school website, get on our school calendar and, and take a look at some of these nice events that happen towards the end of the year. It's a real good time to see our, our, our kids in action. A lot of fun stuff. Yeah. But getting back to your question, in order to have fun stuff and great events, you got to have finances to support that. So you asked about the treasurer. Uh, I just just letting the community know that we still have an uh, open process for interviewing for our treasurer. Uh, we started that about uh, about a month ago. Um, when our treasurer left, uh, Mr. Slumens became the uh, chief financial officer for, uh, for the Youngstown City Schools okay. under their new reorganization, which was a, a, a real nice opportunity for him. So no regrets with him leaving. He, he did, did a fantastic job at the Boardman Schools. Uh, but now we, we're looking for someone to, uh, to replace him, and it's been a, a pretty uh, lengthy search. But uh, I just want to let the community know that position is still open, and we are still searching. So uh, the treasurer's position is open. It's a good thing to hear. Hopefully it'll get filled up soon. Yeah, it's, it's good to bring in uh, new personnel, but uh, y you want to find somebody. We want to get that checked right off fit. and move on. Yeah. So, All right. Um, we also have a new transportation supervisor. Yep. Uh, you know, we we're talking about the treasurer who oversees the gold, so now we'll talk about the big golden SUVs. <laughs> How's that for a joke? Our, for our buses, uh, yeah, once again, uh, mentioned before, but just want, again, keeping the community update that uh, our, we're still interviewing for our transportation. Actually, we'll start interviews this week. Uh, we will have somebody in place, obviously, for next school year, do some transitioning between Mr. Davis as he transitions out of the position. Actually, he wants to stay and become one of our bus drivers, which is fantastic for us because he's yeah. a great bus driver. Uh, but the good thing is he'll be around so that when a new person comes in, uh, just w when we can do some, uh, some overlap and some transitioning, it's such a smooth handoff from the outgoing to the incoming person. When one person leaves and there, there's a, uh, a dead time period, uh, then the new person comes in, uh, that's not always as smooth. It's nice to transfer some of that, as I say, institutional knowledge from the outgoing to the incoming. Yeah, nice, like slow, get everything figured out and assessed beforehand, right? Right, especially when you get somebody coming in who's not familiar with the district. There's, every district does things certain ways. Mm -hmm. now, I'm not saying they're right, I'm not saying they're wrong, I'm not saying they're, they're per but it's just there's, uh, there's ways that they've done things that uh, every district does a little different. And it's nice when you can have a new person not have to have this part of their learning curve. So. Yeah. Uh, that's what we're looking forward to. It gives them a nice fast start instead of having to learn everything. Right. The old proverbial hit the ground running, they mm -hmm. really can. We don't want them to stumble. Yeah, exactly. Air testing is another big thing in our district. So, oh, It's huge. Uh, I know we've talked about this probably for about uh, two episodes, and this will be our third, but the good news is we're going to be wrapping up soon. In about two weeks here, air testing, we will be wrapping up, and uh, then we just wait for the results because that's a big piece of, uh, one, our report card. Uh, which is very important to us, but most importantly, it takes a look at how our students are doing yeah. uh, and how we're doing and how we're being benchmarked to see where we are, see where we can improve, to see where we can celebrate. Uh, so it's a great data tool for us. So it's, uh, we will eagerly await those uh, data results. Yeah. All the test results, a lot of testing. Yeah, yeah, there is, there is. You know, it, uh, being a high school student, you see it. I'm sure you don't mind some of these two-hour delays while we're yes, testing. Yes, I don't I'm actually sure personally have to take with the that, test. Right? So. Yeah, I know. But, uh, but it does provide a great testing environment. I was here last week for a meeting uh, when we had the testing environment on a two-hour delay. It was quiet. And I tell you, if, if you got a student who's taking a test here in uh, the Borman, Borman High School, you want that for your child. You don't want bells ringing and classes changing and, and kids moving yeah, outside. There's a thousand kids still in the building if we don't do this that, that are moving class to class and it, it's just distracting for a kid and this is so, so important especially to high school because it's a pathway to graduation. Yeah. So you want to make sure they got the ultimate atmosphere to be as, sex, as successful as they can on that test. Yeah. Um, also another thing would be uh, the emergency warning system. And right. 
the new press release with that. Yeah, e EWS, this is our, uh, we're finishing up our second year. Uh, we were one of the original uh, districts. There was, there was three districts that got in on the ground floor of this grant with uh, the Mahoning County Juvenile Justice Center. Uh, those districts were Austintown, uh, Struthers, and, and Boardman. And actually, Mr. Lazari was one, you know, was the superintendent when this started. I was fortunate, we talked about transitioning. I was very fortunate last year to sit in a lot of those meetings. Uh, so I understood when, when it came this year, I could hit the ground running and not stumble to understand how EWS impacts us. EW, EWS, as you said, is early warning system. Now, uh, we've talked about this before, but for maybe some of who's first tuning in or first hearing this, uh, the show, early warning system sounds like something you would use for weather, <laughs> like <laughs> storms coming. Uh, it's not that far off, but in, in academic world, uh, kids sometimes have storms coming in their lives, either in the area of academics, in the area of behavior, or in the area of uh, attendance. And so what we try to do, instead of reacting when the storm hits, is being proactive and catching the student before that storm comes. That's it's fair. the early warning. So we're putting data into a, a nice uh, data collection system called Illuminate. That, that gathers, in the past we, we didn't have a place to, to pull or put to one bucket all the data we have for attendance, all the data we have for, uh, for behavior, and all, all the data we have for, uh, for grades. They're really separate systems. And now this collects it, scores it, trends it, and gives it a, uh, a quantifier so we can now code kids to see where they are, take a look at their trends. So if we can see a kid, if a kid's coded green, He's on track, doing well. Yellow is a caution, red means we're in trouble. So we try to catch them before they get to the red. Yellow's when we try to intervene. If a, if a, kid's, if a student's not doing well in, in one of those three areas, a lot of times um, the student didn't necessarily change, but something changed in his life. You don't know what it is. There's a lot of things that happen outside of the school. So we've gotten a lot better at figuring out how to assess that, but it's a little harder for us to plug in resources and programs outside the school day. But that's where EWS helps because they have some of those resources. Where, streamline it. Yeah, yeah streamline it. That's absolutely right. I always say when you're a young teacher, you're good, but you have very few tools in your tool bag. Uh, just like a, like a craftsman, when they first start, whatever you know, a carpenter, whatever they do, um, when they first start off, I mean, they just have a couple basic tools. But probably went 20, 30 years into their into their craft, they're using a lot of specialized tools that they've learned and said that's the right tool for the job. We didn't always have those tools. We, were, we could identify it, but we didn't have that tool. But EWS gives us a whole another set of tools in our tool bag to plug in different uh, mental health resources, um, social resources to help a kid or a family that's getting to that point, get them back on track. Yeah. Our goal is to educate kids. As we say, our, our goal is to transform lives. And uh, EWS helps us identify a kid who has just fallen off the path. In the past, we, we were almost entering when it was too late. You know, they're off the path and now we're trying to clean up uh, the mess and get them back on. Yeah, Here, the aftermath. Yeah, so this, this is, it's been a great tool. I can't, I can't speak enough about it. It's made a difference in kids' lives, which is the number one goal, but it has changed the culture of the school because these kids who fell off that path feel disconnected to the school. And that is not the pathway to success. You gotta feel connected to your school somehow, some way, whether it's BSTN, mm -hmm. Uh, our arts, our athletics, uh, a club, something just besides attending. And when you do, now you're bought into the program. Now you, it's uh, your pathway to success are greater. So. Yeah, it's like the helping hand that you know you might need if you fall off. Nah, it's I, no, it's kind of like I, I have some. I have two 16 year olds, so obviously they're driving. So <laughs> you know, for the parents out there, here's how I compare it. If 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 I say, hey, borrow dad's car. Uh, take good care of it, you know, bring it back uh, at the end of the night. Uh, they will, but do they really buy into the fact that they need to take care of that car? Is it going to come back as clean as I want it? <laughs> uh, maybe there'll be, a, you know, a, a, a drink, uh, like a Dunkin' Donuts container here or, or some wrapper, gum wrappers here that they think is no big deal. But if I said, hey, take that car, when you're done with it, I'm going to give it to you. Now I'm thinking, they have ownership in that vehicle. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I see kids. If they just feel like they're just borrowing the school temporarily and there's no ownership, it's, they treat it differently. But they feel like they own the school, it's theirs, and that's that connection. Yeah. You, know, you feel 
this is this room's important to you because you're involved. Yeah, I'm always here. So you're so. connected, right? You're you're connected. So your success at Boardman is a little bit different than someone who doesn't feel that way. Yeah. You know? That could be a whole different program in itself. So yeah. we'll, we'll stop being in that point. Okay. Death there. So another thing we can talk about is the success the spring sports are having this year. Yeah, again, good good segue, because you talk about kids connected. Some yeah. kids connect to athletics. And so, uh, you know, spring sports, really, you talk about, in, in the beginning of the show, we're talking about things moving fast. Uh, taking a look at spring sports, really, uh, we're two-thirds of the way in. We'll be wrapping up conference play, and uh, most of the teams will be doing uh, district sectional draws. Depends you know, how the state has uh, their brackets uh, crafted. Uh, those will start, st start soon, and uh, our, our teams will enter tournament play, and uh, you know, probably in about two weeks, maybe three max, uh, most of those seasons could be done. Now, some kids yeah. will, will go on to uh, regionals. and maybe like state, to, Yeah, we had, we had a lot of kids uh, at the board meeting uh, being recognized for their state accomplishments in the winter sports. Okay. So I'm looking forward to the May or June board meeting to see those spring athletes yeah. who can make it to state, whatever sport that they're yeah. in. So uh, we wish uh, all our spring sports the best of luck as they yeah, finish definitely. up. And um, the goal is always to be the last sport playing. That means you're making it further and further and further in state competition. Yeah. Hopefully it turns out well for us. Yeah, I, I believe it will. We've got, we got some very good teams and individual athletes out there. Mm -hmm. So another thing to talk about would be school history and moving on to the 100th anniversary of graduating class. Yeah, we talked, uh, I think, last two episodes about this 100-year celebration and then uh, reflecting on that. I said maybe I can give just a little bit. I don't, you know, once again, we could probably do a whole segment on the history of the schools, but uh, some of us say, okay, it's 100 years, that, that's great. Yeah. Um, so just a little bit, I, I pulled up some history here, and like I said, I won't go through it all. I got a couple of pages, but basically, uh, look at the start of the school is 1904. It was our first consolidated school. It was a four-room building, uh, had grades one through ten. Uh, it was known as the Center School, and we still have that name today. Uh, but the kids graduated from Youngstown South High School because we only went to grade ten. So after grade ten, they had to go to South High. So in uh, 1911, we actually uh, cr crafted the first building at the current location, which is where Center Intermediate School is. So okay. we did the building, the first buildings there, and there's still parts uh, of that original building. Um, so all the way back to 1911. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, the, the cost when I did some research was was five thousand dollars? Wow! So I wish we could build a Our new school. Our school is five thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, five thousand dollars. <laughs> now that's nineteen eleven dollars. Um, and then a four uh, a four room addition was constructed, and the high school became a three year school. So still, we're not we're not graduating. Finally, um, in nineteen eighteen is when we had the first graduation class. Wow! They got the diploma, and that's what we're about to celebrate. Uh, we had a whopping three graduates. I wonder how long commencement was. Yeah, <laughs> but long, it, a lot yeah. shorter than it is now. <laughs> yeah. Now we're we're gonna have about three hundred and fifty. So uh, that's a little bit of history. So that nineteen eighteen. Uh, so you're saying, okay, it's 1918, but this is 2017, and when I add 100 to 1918, I get 2018. Mr. Saxton, I think someone on the show, you might have said you're a math teacher, you probably could have been a very good one, but you gotta understand, the, one, that, the 1918 was the first class. So actually, if you, if you keep adding numbers, if you add, when is the 100th class receive a diploma, it comes out to 2017. 2018 means 100 years later, that's actually the 101st class. So just, again, we talk about this. What do you want to celebrate? Do you want to celebrate it's been 100 years, or you want to celebrate this is the 100th year? So we did a little bit of both. Yeah. So year-long celebration can, covers both spectrums. Right. So moving into that, because you mentioned the 100-year uh, celebration, again, I'm going to say it in, in, until, we, until we have them so people know. Um, on, uh, on June 3rd, uh, we will have, on Saturday, June 3rd, we will have our first marquee celebration that's Community Day. I call it Community and Family Day. The townships having their their Community Day for Boardman residents. Yes. Uh, that's going to end. I, I believe that their community ends around four or so, and then we're hoping people will come over to the high school campus where we'll have activities. We're trying to create kind of like a mini mini carnival, mini fair type atmosphere with some you know, maybe uh, some games. Uh, yeah, some games and like a some, some of those bounce round type rentals. Um, uh, a lot of food trucks, you know, just so like the like experience at the fair. Uh, they're trying to create like a taste of Borman because when you come to Borman, you know, people who, who don't live in Borman know Borman's just got great food. We do have great, great food. shopping, great food, uh, great schools. Great schools. Um, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot of things Borman's known for, but we're trying to recreate that and we'll end the night on the turf 
in the stadium with a family-friendly movie on the big screen. So once it gets dark, yeah. um, and uh, that will be free. We're trying to keep everything uh, low cost or no cost. Uh, this is not a fundraiser. This is just to celebrate what we've done. For Boardman. Yeah, over 100 years. So, uh, And then uh, moving on, uh, the, the next one I'd like to keep on people's calendars is Friday, September 22nd will be our athletic celebration. So we're okay. planning some things around that Friday night football game, a pep rally in the gymnasium, uh, all, all athletes, both former and current, looking to, to get some t-shirts donated so they, they can have those on. And we're gonna have a parade, recognize all the schools. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna be a Hall of Fame game, uh, a great weekend. And then uh, Saturday, uh, they're, they're trying to craft some uh, some 5K races, some fun runs to continue really cool. the celebration. So yeah. uh, more details probably at, at our next taping. That's it. Yeah. Oh. It's a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's good stuff though. Yeah, really good yeah. stuff. All right, well, thank you for joining us today, as always. Yeah, it's like I said, I always look forward to this. Yeah, it's always fun. All right, I'm Dan Raver for BSTN. Tune in next month, and remember, we transform lives through academics, athletics, and the arts. Coffee. Hello, and welcome to this edition of the Boardman Board of Education School Board Report. I'm Dan Raver for Boardman Schools Television Network. In this segment, Mr. John Landers, School Board President, joins us to highlight the April Board of Education meeting. Welcome, Mr. Landers. Thank you, Dan. Great to be back. It's good to always have you. So this uh, Board of Education meeting took place on April, 20, April 24th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, you called the meeting to order. Were all board members present? Yes, uh, all board members were present at April's meeting that we held on Monday. Okay. Did anyone from the community address the school board at all? Uh, no, not, not at the meeting on Monday. Uh, there was no uh, public participation uh, for the meeting, but it's a standard part of every meeting, and, and we welcome anyone from the community to, to participate if they would like. All right. Uh, there are actually a lot of recognitions for this month's board report. Uh, from Boardman High School, the Quiz Bowl varsity team achieved many uh, different things such as the Mahoning Valley League Champions for the third consecutive year, the Mahoning Valley Tournament Champions, the Mahoning ha Valley League Awards for the also in uh, several categories such as most points scored, m most correct toss-ups, most powers, highest bonus conversion rate, most toss-up points in the history category, most toss-up points in the literature category, most toss-up points in the geography category, most toss-up points in the current events category, most toss-up points in the fine arts category, and most toss-up points in the mythology category. So a lot of all-around just great um, events for that. And also in the Solon Fall Tournament, they placed fifth overall, with Pranav Padmanabhan being the top scorer. They also went to the state tournament and placed tenth, um, and they also qualified for nationals. They also achieved, or the JV also achieved, Mahoning Valley League champions for the second second consecutive year, Mahoning Valley Tournament runner-ups too. Individual awards in Quiz Bowl also went to Pranav Padmanabhan and Richard Samartillo for being first and second all year scorers. Also, Boardman High School's Quiz Bowl team, uh, they consisted of Nick Crawford on JV, Judy Garzanich on varsity, Jimmy Jones on JV and varsity, Sophie McGee, in JV, Justin Olson on JV, Pradap Badmanhaben, who is the captain of varsity, Jack Pendleton on varsity, Jacob Peters on JV, Simon Pusateri in varsity, Tony Saab in JV, Ricky San Martino in varsity, Mary Sullaby in JV and varsity, Rita Sullaby in JV, and Danny Trillo in varsity. Um, also, Junior Pranav Padmanabhan was among a select group of students from across the country invited to a reception in Washington, D.C. recently. Pranav invented an app called PolitiViewer and won the 2016 Congressional App Challenge for Ohio's 13th District. Pranav's app was on display, along with the displays from other congressional app winners from across the country. The reception was part of the kickoff for the 2017 App Challenge, which invites high school students to create apps while encouraging them in the STEM education fields. So one of, one of the great parts of every board meeting, uh, Dan, is the, the fact that we're able to recognize students for, for great things that they've done, whether it be in academics, whether it be in the arts, or whether it be in the, in the athletics. So honoring the Quiz Bowl team, which has had a great tradition of success uh, the last couple years, uh, winning the county league and county tournament, as well as uh, Pranav, um, 
winning for the app contest are, are great things that we wanted to highlight and, and show the community the positive things our school district is doing and the, and the students we're lucky to have. And, and that wasn't all for today. We also had some additional recognition, which I'll let you talk about. Yeah, we have some winter sports state qualifiers from during the winter season. The boys bowling team qualified for Division I boys state. They finished 10th and their team consisted of Bobby Morrell, Chase Felger, Zach Johnson, Nathan Needham, Sean Sullivan, Ben Berkey, and Seth Lucansti. The boys swimming team had seven, or seven events qualifying for Division I boys state swim. In the dive championship, Callan Aluzia, all Ohio in 50 meter freestyle, 100 meter freestyle, 400 free relay, and 200 free relay. Kyle Kimmerer was all Ohio in the 200 free relay and the 400 free relay. Noba Sista was all Ohio in the 200 free relay and 400 relay. And Matthew Dunlany was all Ohio in 200 free D relay and 400 free relay. In boys indoor track, Chris Butler was all Ohio in the 1600 meter run and the state qualifier in the 800 meter run. George Wallace was an indoor state qualifier in shot put. Justice Drama was the indoor state qualifier in high jump and Casey Zaitsu was the indoor state qualifier in the 3200 meter run. So once again, I mean, a great season of, of winter sports uh, for our district, and it was great to have those, those students and their families in attendance to highlight their hard work, you know, especially during the winter months when it's, when it's cold. You know, I know especially with swimming, it's a lot of time commitment, so we're, we're thankful to, for their hard work, and we're yeah. glad uh, that we were able to recognize their success, and it's always great to add uh, more state qualifiers to the list. Yeah, a lot of great work and a lot of effort to put in to get in the state. I see you also discussed in the meeting about the consent agenda. Would you please highlight what was discussed? Sure. So the consent agenda is a mechanism to allow us to, to cover a lot of agenda items at once rather than going through each item individually. You know, for example, for this month, I think we have close to 20 items on the consent agenda. So this wow. allows us to, to group them together procedurally. So. Um, one of the things we wanted to highlight is that we had the resignations of some certificated staff. Um, it's always always sad to see some teachers go. Uh, we had one retirement, uh, Joyce Half, uh, who's a teacher at West Boulevard Elementary and will be retiring effective June 30th. You know, we thank her for her service uh, to the district and wish her all the best in, in retirement. And then we had two science teachers at the high school um, who have resigned, uh, Jacqueline Gerberry and Heather Mercer. You know, we're, we're sorry to see them go um, and wish them all the best in the future and, uh, you know, thank them for the service to our district. And then, uh, you know, Mrs. Fernbeck and Mr. Saxton and, and our leadership team are working on identifying how it makes sense to potentially re replace or replace those positions. Okay. And then uh, we'll move on. Uh, well, I'll let you talk about the, the leave of absences. Yeah. yeah, can you please tell us a little bit about the leave of absence? Sure. So this is something, you know, we usually do every month. It's, it's part of the procedure that um, teachers are allowed to take um, leaves, leaves of absence. Uh, we had um, several this month that we approved. Uh, Kristen Eby, who's a seventh grade teacher at Glenwood, uh, we granted her a first year unpaid leave of absence uh, from April 20th, 2017 through May 5th, 2017. Also for Lisa Cutchell, who is a fifth grade teacher at Center Intermediate School, we approved a second year unpaid uh, parental leave of absence for the 2017-2018 school year. And lastly for Elizabeth Miller, who is a Boardman High School English or and also ELL teacher, we granted a first year unpaid leave of absence uh, for her uh, from May 11th, 2017 through May 15th, 2017. Okay. So in, also uh, in April, you know, there are certain things we have to do every calendar year or fall during certain parts of the academic year. Um, one of those is kind of, kind of accepting the, the resignations or non-renewals of a large amount of staff, whether it be for people like part-time tutors or off-staff coaches. This is a procedural thing uh, that we do every year. Um, so it's just something we wanted to highlight briefly. Okay. So would you also tell us about the recent classified staff appointments? Sure. One of the things that can be in the consent agenda is, is also the, the appointments or hiring of, of staff. Uh, we hired uh, Teresa Sanchez. Uh, she'll be granted a one-year limited contract as a 3.5-hour health aide at Stadium Drive Elementary. That's effective April 17th, uh, 2017. Okay. We share a little bit about the booster fund coaches. Sure. So, so even though these coaches are, are funded by the boosters, they're still coaches in our school system. So that means they have to be approved on our agenda. So uh, usually some sports, if they're 
these coaches would previously have been volunteer coaches, but uh, in the, our coaching staff and the respective booster group are working together to find a way to, to thank them for their service. And the, the boosters uh, are funding uh, five coaches uh, for our baseball team, Jerry Ensley, Gary Kohler, Patrick O'Brien, uh, Mike Popio Sr., and Robert Switka. So we, we thank the coaches for uh, their contributions to the baseball team, and we also yeah. thank uh, the baseball boosters for their kind of support to, to the program. Yeah. So we appreciate it. It's good to have them. As is customary with the board, approved a list of certificated and classified substitutes. So, so this is something we do every month, even though you know we're close to the end of the, the academic year, we're still always approving and updating our list of uh, certificated and classified substitutes. So you'll, you probably see that on our agenda every month. So that, yeah. that is a list that, that we review and, and approve. Okay, I see we also have a summer school courses and staff in place. Sure, so obviously uh, it's getting close to the end of the academic year and we're preparing for the summer school offerings um, not only what we offer through the Success by Six program, which is a great partnership with the United Way, but also what we offer at the high school. So we have to prove those teachers and, and the, the amount of money they're getting paid as well as what subjects they're teaching. Uh, so, so that's a procedural item, um, well not a procedural item, but something that we'll do around this time every year so that we can allow people to start signing up for, for summer school. Yeah, extremely sign. So, uh, let's go to Treasurer's Business with Mrs. Kim Yeoman. Uh, thank you, Dan. Uh, it was kind of a brief uh, report for the treasurer's um, items this month. So she went through the financial reports that we do every month. The financial reports are really a great mechanism that allow us to see, you know, whether before, you know, the money that's coming into the district or the expenses, are we on track for where we should be at this point in the fiscal year? We're about, I think, um, nine months, nine or ten months into our fiscal year, so we kind of know where we should hopefully be budget-wise, and, and numbers appear to be on track, but this allows the the, the school board uh, for the district and the community to make sure that we're being good stewards and accountable of the, of the money um, the taxpayers have, have provided to us. And we also highlighted a donation uh, to Robin Wood Lane Elementary. Uh, this was from an anonymous donor uh, for a print key Romich company model uh, speech generating device uh, that allows for communication with nonverbal students. Uh, we're very grateful for the donation uh, to Robin Wood Lane Elementary and you know, we'll, we'll thank the anonymous donor. Yeah. Let's talk about superintendent's business with Mr. S Saxon. Sure. Thank you, Dan. Uh, so one of the things we'll, we'll usually do around every time this year is grant uh, continuing contracts for any teachers who, who meet that criteria. Um, you know, with recent uh, state changes um, in the past couple years, those criteria have changed a little bit. They have to do a, little, a couple more years of service than they have done in the past. So we had two uh, that we granted continuing contracts to this month. This month. Uh, the first is Laura Kephart, who's a language arts teacher. Uh, so we're very, uh, I'm sure she's very grateful and we're very glad to have her as a teacher in the Boardman schools. So she's been granted a continuing contract. And also Lindsay Skook, who's a, also a Boardman alumni, um, is a high school research worm teacher, was also granted a continuing contract. And we thank them both for the service and we're glad to have them as part of the team. Yeah, that's great. We also have some upcoming events and won't want to miss them. On Friday, April 28th at 7 o'clock p.m. at Bourbon Glenwood Junior High, the 8th grade spring band concert for 7th and 8th grade and the jazz ensemble will be performing. On Wednesday, May 3rd at 7 p.m. at Bourbon High School, the spring band concert will be held in the Bourbon Performing Arts Center. On Friday, May 5th at 6.30 p.m. at Bourbon High School, the junior, seen, yeah, junior Senior Promenade will be held in the Bourbon Performing Arts Center with prom to follow at 7.30 p.m. at Mr. Anthony's. On Wednesday, May 10th at 7 o'clock p.m., the BHS Spring Chorale Concert will be held in the Boardman Performing Arts Center. On Wednesday, May 17th at 7 o'clock p.m., the BHS Orchestra Spring Concert will be held in the Boardman Performing Arts Center. And on Thursday, May 18th at 7 o'clock p.m., the Boardman High School Visual Arts and Industrial Arts Show will be held in the Boardman High School Gymnasium. All right. Were there any final comments you would like to make? Uh, we just kind of highlighted and, and thanked again all the, the student um, recognition that we had this month. It was great to see a full crowd at the meeting and, and thank them for their, their contributions and all the hard work. So that was really the, the highlight of my presidential comments this month. Okay, good. All right, thank you for joining us, Mr. Landers. Congratulations again to the Boardman High School Quiz Bowl team on an outstanding year. Kudos again to Pranav Pabnhaben for winning the 2016 Congressional App Challenge for Ohio's 13th District. Great job to our winter sports state qualifier in boys bowling, boys swimming, and boys Member. indoor track. 
this is the thing when you got to go the opposite way. Yes. Okay. Sorry, can you do it now? Yeah, I can do it now. Okay. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Landers. Congratulations again to the BHS Quiz Bowl team on an outstanding year. Kudos again to Pranav Padmanabhan for winning the 2016 Congressional App Challenge for Ohio's 13th District. Great job to our winter sports state qualifiers in boys bowling, boys swimming, and boys indoor track. Check out our Boardman School's website for further details on upcoming events. A reminder that our May Boyd Board of Education meeting will be held at Boardman High School on Monday, 22nd, May 22nd at 6.30 p.m. I'm Dan Raver for BSCN. Let's keep striving for excellence. Mm -hmm.